Hello everyone, Ian here at Able City in Burbank and today I am checking out the O'Connor 2560 Fluid Head. This can be thought of as the little brother to the 2575. It shares a lot of the same design concepts and functionality. To really best appreciate this head, I'm going to do a series of close-ups showing you all the features. One of the options for the 2560 for mounting a camera is this plate here. This is an accessory that can be purchased from O'Connor. It's called a European plate. And the way that this works is that you have a locking mechanism right here. You lift up on it, you pull this arm out. It's now disengaged. It allows you to slide this back and forth using this called a dovetail. The idea is you have a reference line here and it allows you to rebalance the camera based on your build. To make this a little easier, I'm going to rotate this around and you can see on this side I have a scale that's been built in. So if I loosen it again, you can see that perhaps I might bring it forward for a prime on a camera. If I add a zoom lens, I may need to bring it back to recenter it. The European plate comes with this camera plate with two 3816s milled into a channel that gives you lots of adjustment space for different types of camera bases. The way it works is the front goes in, the back comes in, and when you push down, it engages this lock lever, which is midway. The last way we want to manually slide it over and now your camera is secured onto that plate. The only way to get this off is if I push up on this lever and then swing it across. To take the European plate off of the 2560, I'm going to lift up on the safety catch here, pull the lever back, and then pull down on this silver piece here. This is spring-loaded, so I'm gonna push down, and now my camera and my plate can be taken off. To put it back on, you're simply going to realign this edge here, put it into this receptacle over here, push straight down, lock, and you're secured. I've exchanged the European plate for a dovetail base plate system, and the dovetail works just like the European plate in that it clips in the same way. I loosen the lever here, and I can now slide my camera payload back and forth for balancing. The advantage to this setup is that now I have the base plate, which gives me a second level of balance opportunities. It also has support rods for my camera build. The head is in Mitchell mount. It could be swapped out for a 150 ball. Either way, you want to be able to quickly make sure that your head is level. So it has this spirit level, and for low light situations, a press of the button here illuminates it from underneath. Turn the camera around here because I want to start showing you how the tilt controls work on this head. So I have balanced the camera build to the center of this head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the tilt lock. And by the way, the tilt and the pan lock are on the left hand side of the operator. This way the left hand can be operating those controls while the right hand is operating the pan handle. And as I said, I've centered the mass to the center of the head. So when I let go of the pan handle here, it doesn't go anywhere. My next task is to engage counterbalance so that when I tilt back or I tilt forward, the camera will stay exactly where I've pointed it. Now, one of the great features of this head is that it has an infinite counterbalance, meaning that I'm going to pull out this little lever and I'm going to start cranking up the value of my counterbalance. And when I have it finished, I'll be able to put this anywhere at any angle and it'll stay put. I've set my counterbalance, so now wherever I tilt forward or backward, the camera will stay exactly where I stop. Let's try that and see how it works. There you go. This is one of the great features of the O'Connor head. Having this infinite adjustability of the counterbalance means that we can dial this in exactly to our camera build. And why that's so important is because now the fluid head is doing the work of absorbing the weight of the camera. So the camera operator can be concentrated on telling a story with the frame rather than fighting gravity. Just as we can fine tune the counterbalance, so it's true of the pan and tilt. We have infinite adjustment here. With both the pan and the tilt, we just dial in the amount of resistance that we want. 
So in zero, we have very little, so we can do a whip pan. If we're going to a longer lens, we can now dial in the amount of resistance we want, get the type of camera movement we want to tell the story that we want. A great safety feature built into this fluid head is this locking pin for the tilt. Now I have everything balanced and properly set up, so as we saw before, wherever I put the tilt of this camera, it stays where I point it. However, if I go and I change the build on this camera, let's say I put a bigger, heavier lens on the front, if I only have this locking lever for tilt and gauge, it may very well be that it starts to dip down as I put the weight of that new lens onto the camera mount. So to prevent that, what we have is this locking pin right here. Right now it's in a green position. If I flip this up, you can hear physically a pin goes into the tilt mechanism and now it prevents it from moving. So if I use this in addition to my lock down here, now I have a nice sturdy platform that's totally stable for me to do a new camera build. The 2560 supports a full line of professional accessories, such as the front bracket here, which accommodates a front box. Front box being sort of a tool kit that allows us to have things that we use with the camera nearby. And this eyepiece leveling bracket on the back. If we attach an eyepiece leveler to it, we now have the ability to extend detachable eyepieces from a camera body back towards the operator, such as when we're on dollies. That concludes my look at the O'Connor 2560 Fluid Head. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.